Hi, everybody. It's Hi. January 18th, still January 18th, and you're here at the DEI Working Group meeting. So happy to see everybody. Um, welcome to a new face. Shabam, is that how you say your name? Could you say it for us? You're oh, you're muted. My name is Shubham, my, myself from India. Currently, I'm studying in Indian Institute of Technology, IIT BHU, Varanasi. Nice I am very curious. I am very curious to contribute to your organization. Really, I liked your organization and your contributing nature. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Um, I should also do captions. I forgot to do that. Okay, let's go over to the non existent agenda because Elizabeth was slacking and did not do one. There we go. Wide open. We can talk about whatever y'all want. Uh, let's see what we were doing last time. Oh, yeah, the onboarding team. We can talk about that. Um, yeah. Okay. I think this is, this is, I consider this part of our restarting season. <laughs> right. Thanks for being so kind. Before we go further, however, let's pick a facilitator for next time. I can do it. Who said that, Sean? Sean, yeah. I'm also happy to let someone else do it. Oops, there you go. It's I now it permanently. Googans. Googans, yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, you'd be surprised how many times my name was spelled Googans in grade school. <laughs> the first day of class, name tag. It's like, really? <laughs> and the number of times Sean was spelled wrong is also scarring material <laughs> over my life. <laughs> Did you do you all know that Sean called me Brian for the first two years of <laughs> I did of it's, us knowing each other? It's there was yeah, I, there was a reason, but it was a dumb reason, and I don't know why I did that for so long, or Brian. <laughs> um okay, we're just gonna make that change real quick. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I approved. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you do look like a Brian. I can see it. I, I can absolutely see it. I can't see you as a Brian anymore. I don't know where that, I, like, I sort of kind of know where it came from, but it still doesn't make any sense that, that I did it for so, so long. Sean, to your point about misspelling, I this is a, a fun fact about me. I have many nicknames because my name's Elizabeth. So at different period of time in my life, people called me different things. Like I grew up, my family called me Betsy. That's what oh. like my whole family still calls me Betsy people I went to grade school with like if someone says hey Betsy I know like that's my frame of reference is how I know. Wow. That. So in school I got some award for something I don't know because I was awesome then not anymore, but I got an award and they engraved it Betsy but they spelled it wrong B E S T Y. So Best then my family just called me bestie <laughs> forever so. <laughs> so I have it like permanently engraved on this award bestie Baron. I'm going to start calling right? you that. Oh man! Here we'll just to make Matt feel better. We'll do that. There we go. Now it's now it's all good. So <laughs> okay. Thank you, Sean, for for facilitating next week. Um, yeah. So last week we talked about starting this onboarding team that um, seemed to get some really good traction in the community meeting. We had really good responses, I think, to it. Um, do we want to talk about that a little more here? Do we want to? I know we talked about maybe having a separate meeting with these folks who are interested, um, which we probably will do eventually. But do we want to talk about this more here and like solidify anything? Uh, why not? Right? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, the way this team works for those who haven't heard about this is it would be um, a group of these folks and whoever else is interested in kind of helping newcomers um, they would find their way short term so um, just as a prime example um, someone reached out to me and said hey i want to participate this morning as fact um, i want to participate in the metrics models working group how can i do that so that would be something that like any one of these folks on this team could could help with um, but it would be more of like i i envision it anyway and we can do this however we want but i kind of envision it as like if someone's looking for assistance maybe they reach out to this team and then someone kind of assigns themselves as this person's buddy 
So um, maybe like Anita would say, hey, I can help you with that. And um, then Anita would kind of be that contact person for this newcomer for a little while, while they're still onboarding. So that way it's like, they know who to go to regardless of what their question is. They have like that kind of like familiar, friendly face of like, I can ask this person questions and I'll get an answer um, or they'll help me find the answer. And they're not just kind of flailing out there trying to figure out who to ask what. Because right now I think Ruth and Shoya and I get a lot of those kinds of questions and we're only, you know, three people. But if we could expand that team of, of folks, then I think that would be really, really helpful. Um, what it would not be is like a full on mentorship, you know, a, a, an intensive like relationship where, you know, they're coming to you with coding questions or, um, you know, anything like that. They might help you figure out who to ask about stuff or where to go, but it, it's not that it's not meant to be that kind of an intensive um, uh, long term commitment on the half of of these of this team. It's mostly just to be a friendly face and to welcome folks along. Um, so the things that we need to sort out are um, what we want to call the team and what we want to call ourselves. If we want to have a mascot, like we have badgers, we have a little badger that is our unofficial mascot for that team. Um, and also um, we will need to uh, maybe document some of this out, just like expectations of like what this is, is just for newcomers also, so that they know what they're getting into, that new people on this team kind of know what they're getting into and signing up for. Um, I'm dating myself here, but our mascot, the first mascot that came into my head was Captain Stubing from the Love Boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are absolutely dating yourself. <laughs> but that's true, like, welcome aboard, yes, yeah. welcome to our, our ship. So I'm trying, so I thought about this, I've been thinking a lot about the process, you know, how we help people, not a lot, because I only learned about it yesterday, but thinking a little bit about the process. And I'd really, really like to keep this in Slack somehow. So the way that, for example, in the newcomer channel, people can type newbie, and they get information about participating. Like if there's a way or some people have thoughts about how they could type like, you know, um, welcome aboard, right? And it would it would send a message to the folks that are on that list above yeah. that we have a new person requesting help. Like it'd be a DM to all of us, mm -hmm. you know, like a, a just a group, and then one of us could just say, hey, I'll, you know, I got this, you know what I mean? Or something. Yeah. Like Do we have an active maintainer for the Slack bot? I because I think that in theory, that what you're, what you're asking for is really probably just additional logic in the Slack bot. That just sends a, a, a group DM kind in, of kind Yeah. Of in response to some keyword or set of keywords. Exactly. Yeah. Yep, because then we can just see that and let's reach out to that individual directly. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, <laughs> you're muted again somehow, or we don't hear you anyway. Yeah. Elizabeth, you said, yeah, go ahead, but I wasn't sure. Are you saying, like, yeah, go build that Slack bot? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. Shum has his hand raised. Oh. Still muted. Can't hear you. Well, raise your he's hand not, again. Your yeah, own he's good. not showing his muted, so it might be a no. speaker problem, or it might be yeah. I never know what's with Zoom. What rules they've changed today? Yeah, you can also just type in the chat. It's totally fine. So, do you? What do you all think about trying to keep this in Slack? I. Like, I'd rather not create another form and a form that gets sent to a bunch of people. And yeah, I think we're too early in our discourse adoption to try to do something like this there. And I, I do think we, if, especially if, as you suggested, we could create some additions to the logic of the Slack bot to message everyone in the, in the chaotics group who's interested. 
that would that'd be an effective way to ensure a fast response, which you know we know is very important. Yes. So what we would need to do is connect with the Slack bot team to figure out what sort out what this would entail. I like that idea too. I I because I'm I'm was just a little bit worried about um people's time like I'm trying to be mindful of time, you know, and energy and effort from volunteers especially. So if I volunteer to be on this team, like what is what kind of what am I getting myself into? And so I wanted to give um a lot of control for that team to kind of control their own level of participation in that. Um, and keeping it to Slack, I think is a much uh, better way to kind of facilitate those conversations. And then, you know, people can send links or whatever, and it's all right there. So I really like that idea. Matt. Okay. And then I was thinking too, like, if we have it in the newbie bot, that welcome bot, Yeah. for Sean's point, um, if we find that it's just like, there's just too many requests coming yeah. in. Like we can just turn that off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Until offer. we can sort it out a little yeah. bit better. On our not end. offer yeah. that service temporarily. Yeah. So, and we would just have the ability to do that quickly. Yeah. Um, and also be able to turn off if we get overwhelmed. Cool. So I'm curious, any other like Mary Blessing? I know you're on the call and I'm trying to recording see. Recording in progress. Was it not being recorded already? Well, that was weird. That was because I swear I saw the record <laughs> notification. So the plans are going to be. Oh, I think he rejoined. Oh, there oh. we go. But it was telling him the recording. Oh, was oh, 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 I see. All right. Now I, under, now I understand. He can hear you now. <laughs> Basically, sir, I was saying the documentation is quite old. For, for which parts? Like, uh, uh, same, um, making sure on that place, uh, we can write, make install without a uh, kind. Is was this, this the Augur documentation, or where did you see that? Mm, like, can I share my screen? Yeah, I guess, can you share your screen? Shiva, am I asking you to share your screen? Yes, yes. Okay. I think Elizabeth, oh wait, there we go. Well, it's, it's making its way. Yeah. Right right now, yeah. it's like a 1950s television broadcast in the United States, right? So the the dial. Is not supported. Like the colors make you think you're looking at auger documentation. Yeah, so this is that maybe, one point here. Like, can you drop a link to what you're looking at in there? Um, yes, sir. I, uh, I can in the chat because for whatever reason you're I don't know whatever else is seeing, but I'm I'm seeing a poor reception of a Packers game from the 1980s. Yeah, it's very blurry screen. But if you can um, post like Sean said, post a link to what you're what you're looking at. at. Yeah, I think it's Augur. Yes, I, I yeah, we should yeah. set up a time outside this meeting and to sir, talk about this that. Is this link will come out from terminal but mm -hmm. this this link is not working the which like i have some photos can, can you send me um so i am sharing sharing that photo. You, yeah I, I i got the link could, could you send me a slack are you on our slack shubham yes sir. Could you please send me a Slack message with the issue you're encountering on this? 
and then uh, we can yeah. handle that asynchronously. Can you stop sharing your screen too? Oops. Okay. The, Let's see. I think Elizabeth can stop his screen share if so. necessary. Yeah. Okay. But although I'm enjoying okay. the the um, nostalgia of <laughs> technology problems from days gone by. When, when I didn't have to worry about quantum computing decrypting everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I, still, I still see it. Can you? What do you see? The blurry screen. Oh, mine looks like I'm sharing. Okay, hold on. Oh, maybe maybe Elon Musk did buy Slack. <laughs> I mean Zoom. <laughs> while we're while we're waiting for that to get resolved, I'll mention in my software engineering class that yesterday I predicted that we will see a steady decline in Twitter performance and increase in outages throughout the semester. And that it's all about bad software engineering and development operations. And so I believe I'm right. It'll be fun to watch. Okay, so um, so yeah, so back to the process of this. Um, we can uh, I'll, we can check with the um, team, the Slackbot newbie team, and see if uh, this is something that can be easily added. Okay. And what that would entail. Um, as far as like, this is another question I had to see what people thought as far as like onboarding this team to the process. Like I feel like everyone on this team um, just based in their work in chaos and like what i've seen they know kind of how to be that guide and how to like yep. gently you know guide people and show them, but do we need to have some kind of like guidelines in place for for folks that maybe want to join that, this team, but have not really done this kind of work before? Or is that overkill? Is that too much? Yeah, I don't think we need that. I mean, the, the way you were talking about it was like, for example, when you said, like, I want to join the metrics model, like, it's, it's really just a few pointers to okay. the meeting time and yeah, I, I, I agree. And it, um, from a philosophy of organizations or communities perspective, I think not laying down like gates in this case, like if someone wants to volunteer, simply welcoming them to do that volunteering, it allows the community to evolve um, and doesn't create a bureaucracy that might prevent its natural evolution. So um, conceptually, I think, and theoretically, I think it's what Matt and you suggest is right. Okay, so um, I had put this in um, the criteria to be this on this team would be um, just have to have good knowledge of chaos, have to be okay, like interacting with a stranger that you might not know. Um, I was thinking like to train on the code of conduct, but maybe that's not necessary. Um, and then think, would need to be added. Go ahead. I think, I think um, anyone that volunteers should maybe be made explicitly aware of the code of conduct. Um, I don't think it's been a problem. I don't think we, but I, I don't think it's a bad idea to have like a, that's a pretty small gate to expect people to have just check a box that, or, or just indicate, or I don't even know, maybe even as, just as advice that we provide, like you should be very familiar with the code of conduct for our community, I think that you know if, if we experienced rapid growth again this year as we did last year then i don't know i think that's important in case we start we start attracting people who are maybe more prone to not the way that we are like i don't think every open source project um has this kind of culture so this this was though for the people who are helping so you think that's what i mean yeah, yeah. I think yes. the people on the list should all be told take a look at the code of conduct absolutely yeah yeah and then we were thinking to have the newcomers go through those three steps on our quick start first yeah that's great and then they can approach the team okay yep 
Um, I'm going to say private Slack channel. Just we'll take out this course for now. The problem is, is the only problem with that is from a process perspective, the newbie bot points them to those that path to contribution, correct? Uh, or no? That's a good question, actually. I'm not sure because I think it still maybe points to the to a bunch of different things. Like you can pick a bunch of different options of like, hey, path I want to contribution might be develop. really good to to include in the newbie bot. The path to contribution would probably be great to include in the newbie bot. Yeah. And I said this in yesterday's meeting, um, but I'll say it again in the interest of being redundant. Um, there is this, um, let me throw a link here. We ran across, I think it was in this working group that we ran across it. Um, but I really, I really do like the philosophy of first timers only. I just put the link in chat for you know tagging some codes or tagging some issues that are open in groups for first timers uh, and you know having some level of commitment from the people on the captain stubing team to um, you know support them through making a contribution that could be maybe that's not the first step maybe that's the second a second step in the process yeah. so when they move for, when they move to contribution this I like this philosophy. You know, that brings up another point, um, and maybe this is something we still need to define was like where we fall it for this team. Um, so we had kind of said from exploring to participating. So like yes. I don't know if that would include things like, hey, I can't get this DCO to work. Like, would that be on this team to help sort that out? So I get those kind of questions also. I think I think we I do agree that like the like what you said I can't remember the words you used basically to participating from whatever is before that to participating is what the, this group is primarily for and what I'm talking about is participating and contributing and if, and if that and, and that I agree is not the main focus of this group so I was talking about something that might be something we could use at another stage at another time after we work on this onboarding. So I might be jumping ahead here by bringing up first timers only, and I should well, backtrack. <laughs> I mean, I think it's certainly valid. And I think that, that it, there, there is a, a, a gap or, or a space there where you know people want to contribute and they want to do that first PR, but we do have some obstacles like the DCO or like the you know other things that maybe they are struggling with. So maybe there is space for maybe a subset of this bigger team to be like a, like an escalated, like level two, I don't know, like, I don't know. So what I think, we're... yeah, like, well, I think like, for example, uh, like if I look at the people on this call, um, I, I, I know Katie and Georg and Mary Blessing and Anita have all made contributions. I'm sure there are others, and of course, Matt and Elizabeth. So those of us who have been through the DCO, um, maybe that, would, uh, if we're going to talk about updating the Slack bot, maybe that could just be a separate um, Slack bot keyword. That's, you know, I don't want to like pile too much into the first effort here. So I'm, I'm conflicted about that. But if we are, like, if somebody's opening up the guts of the Slack bot, adding like a keyword, like I need help with DCO or DCO, um, could, could similarly send a private message. It's just, yes, I, I agree. Yeah, and that's what I, yeah. So okay. I, I, and Matt's confirming my concern about what I'm saying, which is that we're getting ahead of ourselves and in chat. And so I'm going to pull back and say, yes, I, I think I'm, I, I jumped ahead and I should back that. I should like back away from that. Okay. So we're going to put that for now. Um, advice on things like DCO, which, um, you know, we can also work on documentation. Um, so maybe if there is a question, this person, this people on this team could just point, go, go tell them to go check the knowledge base because it's all out there. Or I'd say go post your question in the general chat. Like or that, yeah. you know, if you have a question about DCO, let's put it in general because I'm sure other people have that question too. You know what I mean? And then we at least have an arc or put it in discourse when that's 
set to go because then we have it archived for other people to read. So, I mean, that would be, I think this group is like, personally, it's, it's about helping newcomers like get out into the community, like know where yeah. to ask your questions, know, <laughs> feel comfortable that you can mm -hmm. put this in in the auger slack channel you know what i mean and that you're going to get a response so yeah. um okay. yeah so i think like specific things like dco i don't think i don't think that's really our our issue yeah the issue would be encouraging them to ask the question about dco <laughs> in the right place okay perfect and then i do think one thing for the crew member that you know, we do have to ensure that everybody on that list is responsive to to people. So like if you're going to commit, you know, like whomever's on that list above, if you're going to commit to helping people, you know, like myself, John Armstrong, you know, Mary Blessing, those are the people I see on, on your screen right now, mm -hmm. um, that we have to like watch for the newbie DM regularly we have to be like willing to respond right away to the group saying i you know i'm happy to help here that you know that kind of stuff so I, there does seem to be like a, sometimes a challenge of commitments early but ensuring that those commitments stay through the entire like committing to do something and that that stays active throughout the entire process yeah agreed uh, we definitely don't want any requests oh go ahead delight sorry okay um i just thought of something that might be helpful to take this um particular group to a greater height um, first of all, you know, the queue members listed above, I think we need to come together to have a meet and discuss this in between ourselves of how we can and remind ourselves of all these points Matt just mentioned now. Because sometimes most people might be so busy that they won't have the time to go to the documentations written here. And at the end of the day, those points that are valid that need to be implemented cannot be implemented. But I think that if we can set up meets, Maybe once in a month, we do a regular checkup of how far are we helping the newcomers in chaos and answering their questions and the challenges they're facing. That would be a great idea. Yeah, to that point, um, I can also go ahead and just put us in a Slack channel um, of, of those folks who have yeah. actually, let me just put that over here as an action item. Um, yeah. I feel like having us in the Slack channel works better. There's a lot of meeting going on in chaos and <laughs> so we'll just find time, space time to, you know, uh, join this meeting. So maybe we could be on this private Slack channel and just checking on one another uh, anytime. I can easily do that. Agreed. Uh, do we have thoughts on a name? Like, do, do any of these really jump out at us? There were some other suggestions over here. We don't have to decide right today, but I always like a name. Yeah, I mean, I, I, onboarding, it feels like there's a ship metaphor involved somewhere. Um, so crew member that has a very um, boat. It's the <laughs> cruise director or the... Uh, is that the name of the person who like organizes the fun stuff on the boat? Is that that? No. I've never I been on a boat either. other than like a like I've never been on a, sh a cruise ship, so I don't know um, what they call those people. <laughs> like friends, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot you could do with uh, 1990s television references there. <laughs> um, we do concierge. Have... I like concierge. That's not a bad one over there on the comments. Let's 
do these translate like into other places? Like, do people understand what a concierge I think, is? I think, well, concierge sounds like a French word. So <laughs> I'm thinking it translates in a lot of regions, but I have no idea. Um, My personal favorite, I think, is uh, one of these first two. That's just me. I, I'm good. I'm good with either of those two. I think but, there's a lot we could we could discuss naming things for a long time. <laughs> True. Um, crew crew members or tour guide. I guess maybe tour guides communicates a little bit more clearly that we're providing guidance. Where crew members is a little bit more difficult to distinguish, like what that is. Maybe not. I'm looking up synonyms for tour guide. We have chaperone. <laughs> that sounds not right. <laughs> docent. Docent, yes. <laughs> yes, you're chaos docent. I wanted something I to match that. with capybaras, but nothing matches with them. So I love them. I want to use them somehow. What are, I don't even know what those are. Um, what? Creatures, the little friendly creatures. Oh my oh. gosh, Sean. I got pictures of snow monkeys from Japan from three years ago. That's the best I can do on cute creatures. I'm always I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google them now. Okay, no, I was gonna say I'm always afraid to like live Google anything. No, no, no. You right? Oh, no, I, I hear you there. Yeah, I'll, go, I'll Google what that Google is. Google it. You'll be, you'll guys be is the most descriptive. Yeah. Like I if agree. somebody it it, like even if somebody anywhere I feel like in the community saw a tour guide they would under like if I said I'm a tour guide for chaos I think they'd probably sort of understand what I do and I see no reason why a capybara could not be a tour guide a little boat hat on him yeah a capybara <laughs> with a little boat hat yes my life is complete I'm pretty sure, like, if I Google image that, I will find a capybara. With, I found capybaras. Uh, oh, well, not quite. What do others think about tour guides? Does it make sense? Does it does it translate across cultures and spaces? And does it, does it have the same meaning everywhere? I don't know. I think it would be helpful if somebody who doesn't speak English as their first language told us if tour guides gives us a translation because I only speak English, really. I mean, I speak enough Swedish and French to order wine and find the bathroom. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm traveling with you next time, Sean. Yeah, yeah. Got the, got the basics down. All right, well, I'm not hearing anyone yell that that's a like a horrible connotation in some place other than here. So um, maybe we'll start with that. And if we decide later to change it, we can. How's that? There are quite a few pictures of capybaras wearing hats. Oh, yeah. Love it. Love <laughs> it so much yeah i see a couple with top hats yeah. oh my gosh yes yeah. okay thanks everybody for jumping in this conversation and helping sort this out i think we have a really good start here so couple the other action item yes oh my that's god my, yes. that's my Where'd favorite go? one that i found <gasps> i made it smaller no, that was my, but that's just like a quick Google search. I'm sure we could find even cuter capybaras oh, wearing hats. Oh my gosh. Our capybara tour guide. Oh my gosh. My life is literally complete now. Oh man. Thank you, Sean, for putting that in there. Um, just makes and, everything better. Uh, there are some animals that have hats that actually, I'll just say if you Google llamas with hat, you will find a lot of, um, inappropriate content not like okay really, 
dark, dark okay, humor. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> it's not as <laughs> very quickly, Sean. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm here. I'm going to be okay. <laughs> talking about llamas with hats. Okay, connect. You know. I'm going to connect with the Slack box to sort out. Uh, no. uh, You're getting feedback. Could you mute? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure who is who. Is it me? No, it's Shubram. Shubram. Oh. Um, one, two, okay. There you go. All right, uh, Anita, I know that you might have some updates on this. Is that right? Do we have, we have about 10 minutes left in the meeting? Yes, yeah, so um, I'm looking for persons to participate in the mock interview. So if you want to just hit me up in Slack, Thank you. I think I had agreed to do that and then I did not sign up for a slot. So I'm meeting with you, Anita, right after this. Yes. Okay, I put a thing in here for me to remind myself. Anybody else um, interested in doing a practice interview with Anita? Reach out to her. Oh, oh okay. Um... All right. How long does that take, Anita? Um, so the first one I had with you not took about 40 minutes. Okay. All right. Um, anything else you want to say about that or questions for Anita? Anything? Okay. Um, contributor roadmap. Let's document this from notes below in agenda. Okay, let's look at this because I don't remember what we were saying. Oh yeah, so um, all of these notes that we had done to try to define our little buckets of the the path to contribution, and um, we wanted to kind of uh, clean this up a little, and then we're going to put it out in the knowledge base in a more like in one document of like, here's the whole path. So um, this was the document that we started. So we need to just clean this up a little bit. How is this related to that, the like participating page that's on the website right now? This is where, you mean that quick start? Yeah. This yeah. is where that came from. So if you go to the website, oops. If you can type and then you go to the website and you go to the no new contributors go to the quick start here it gives you these three things to do and then it says once you've done these three things you're ready to start participating more actively in chaos well we wanted to have like a next document for them to go to okay okay and maybe like have it all like in the knowledge base so that if somebody wanted to see the whole thing at once they could as well so just to make this more explicit. So that's really all that was. Gotcha, okay. So then, because it will need a little bit of cleanup, just looking at it, like some of the things are already in that quick start guide. So like come to op open office hours. Yeah, and yeah, our three things are the Slack office hours and monthly onboarding. So that came from this. Uh, open, yeah, join general slides. So assuming they've done those, we probably don't need those again. Right. This is just for us also to define, That's like, if they're exploring, this is what they do. And then these things, maybe we take out and put, I don't know, somewhere else. Okay. So then participating would be join a working, is that number one? That we want to do uh what I do we see. want the three next three things to be i gotcha so like join a specific okay a specific work group meeting four times yes okay. so first put the meeting on your calendar attend the meeting four times and then join the slack that's specific to that yeah 
So once they do those three things, then they're ready to contribute in. Gotcha. The so then we would have contributing. Yes. Okay. And then it could be like, um, honestly, like find a problem in the documentation or something like that. Yeah, this is where it gets a little tricky because each working group is so specific to what's needed. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm thinking any any of them could use some like repo look, you know. Yeah, maybe like read read through. I'm just trying to think of like some of the easiest types of contributions, which are like fixing a typo. Yeah. And we do get those in there. They're great. I love them. I, I do too. Dead links. Maybe, maybe this is where we use Sean's first timers only. Also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look for first timer only tags. And get involved in yeah, in that issue. Mm -hmm. And comment. Um, would uh, facilitate a meeting count? Or is that yeah. not? Well, that would be great. That's a great contribution. Um, obviously, like issuing a PR of some sort for, I'm trying to like keep it like really accessible to like yeah. a single line PR. Like, or we, um, what about um, install the DCO plugin? Yeah, that bot or not the bot. Yeah, the plugin. There you go, because you'll need that for making. You'll need that, hard. yeah. Maybe we should have that first, actually, because any any PR on anything is going to require that. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, that's a great list right there because. Like to Sean's the first timer only issues or, you know, good first issue kind of thing. Like, I mean, if somebody's going to start getting involved in that, it'll likely end up in a PR or, you know, mm -hmm. or not if the issue is closed. But um, that's a nice next step for contributing. And I mean, we like at some point we probably have to just like realize that the types of like what we're articulating in contributing is these are like first step contributing kind of things like these aren't um recommendations for people who have been in the community for two years and are yeah. actively contributing to auger or grimoire lab yeah metrics model meeting you know right <laughs> yeah we don't, need, we don't need to articulate all that <laughs> right 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 um, and then like this, who to contact for each working group. So that was that was also something that's sometimes in the open office hours, there's space for that. Other times there really isn't just based on the nature of like who comes and what kind of questions there are. Um, I mean, on an individual level. So like if we, for instance, if we have like five people that show up to the open office hours, um, it's hard to kind of tailor that for one particular person or what ends up happening is we spend the time talking to one person and everyone else is kind of listens, which is, is I guess, okay. But um, to connect somebody with an actual working group, this, this piece right here is a piece that um, there's a gap, I will say, I think. Do you think that's covered in the tour guides? Maybe, maybe, yeah, okay. yeah. Cause yeah, cause that, that's like exactly what we're trying to do in the tour guide spot. Yeah. Do we want to um, add that as an optional step up here in exploring? Yeah. Um, oh. Type newbie <laughs> in the newcomer channel. Yeah. Like, just do that. <laughs> yeah.
join. We should actually also have that. Yeah. And then I think you can get rid of optional. Just type newbie. Like there. <laughs> like that's it. That's, we have let's these things that to help you. So. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is great. This is really great. We'll just kind of keep these down here. Um, just for whatever reason. Um, so now what we can do is create another document that is for participating and that will link here, like go here next. And then from there we can go, oops, we can go to the contributing and then ta-da, that's the end. <laughs> like, I don't know what will happen then, but. Oh, and, and honestly, if somebody takes the time, kind of like we don't talk to long-term auger contributors like two years in, like if somebody's taking the time to go through all of this, I they're probably that's probably pretty good in terms yeah. of some placement in the chaos project. Yeah, I feel like that's a pretty pretty solid foundation for sure. Okay, we're out of time, so we're gonna close up the meeting. But thanks everybody for coming yeah. in for this was super productive. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no, this was a good meeting. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see you next time when I will facilitate. You are facilitating. All right. <laughs> That's All right. right. <laughs> Bye. See you, Bye. everybody. Bye.